Okay, guys, welcome back again. Thinking outside the box, your host Atlas here with, like I said, I said from the last time, my favorite, Dion favorite, here with Matthew. Now, the topic today is gonna be a pretty, pretty deep, pretty sensitive topic. Um, so, let's fasten your seatbelts because we're about to go for a ride. Yeah. So, Mr. Matthew. Sir. What is your concept of God? My concept of God, the I, Creator, I God, Elohim, what they, what they, Allah, whatever they call it. What is your concept of God? Yeah, I see God as the source and substance of all existence. Right, like my basic definition is everything to the exclusion of nothing. God is the idea of the whole of us, every part and particle of life, and my concept of God is then a loving God because all of it is God. God loves itself and therefore loves all of us. Like it's very logical in that sense. But my, my, my knowing in relationship with God is a God who is in truth, not only the source of all life, but actually the life itself and, um, alive through us. So, in a sense, God is existence. Then. It's just it's what else would you call existence? Okay, and then and you say love is is an ingredient of God. I think it's just a natural like byproduct. Like if you created all of this dope stuff called life in the universe, I would be kind of fanboy about it. I'd be like, oh my god, look at that! What the thing? Oh, this is amazing! This is amazing! I mean, I do that right now when I draw a stick figure. Like, I gush at my kids for breathing. I, I can only imagine what it must be like for God to see all of this and be like, yo, it's very good. I that It seems natural to me that that would just inspire. You know. So is God... Um you know, you know, you read in the when you read in the Bible and some of the scriptures are different. They make God to seem like it's a male figure. <laughs> okay, cool. Or do you do you think it's God? It's in a male figure or female figure? Do you think that God has any gender? Um. Yeah, I think God has every gender because God is everything. So. Always, right? Always. Um, the God that I know, right? And I'm not going to speak of religion. Right. Because I'm not religious. Right. But I, what I will speak of is relationship. Because I've spent time with the God inside of me. The one that is alive here. The one that actually listens when I call and answers my prayers and uh, brings stillness to my heart. Like, that's the God that I know inside. And her nature is more pronounced as feminine in my life because I was open to receiving her more at that level. I've always been a mama's boy. So like my primary relationship with God is as the goddess, as my mama, I call her, well, actually, I'm not gonna tell you what I call her because it's my secret name for her. <laughs> but um, she doesn't really have a name. She doesn't care what I call her, but by me choosing a name, I'm choosing a personal relationship with an impersonal love, right? I've recently come into fullness of the father. Uh, and that's just a different attribute of the same God, right? The father teaches order. He teaches discipline. He teaches focus. He teaches structure. He teaches accountability, responsibility, integrity. But my mother, she teaches tenderness. She teaches compassion. She teaches mercy. She teaches allowance and surrender. She teaches relaxation and art. Um, so... I respect my mother, or I respect my father, and I love my mother, and together, they're God. Nice. Totally nice. And so, um, what's your concept on um, that there was so much different um, religion with different gods? Yeah, cool. So, you, um, do you think it's, um, how would I, I bring that because it's very sensitive? Um, how would we say that? Um, is it all the same God or is it all separate gods? Um, usually whenever you arrive at a paradox like that, the answer is always just yes. That they're all the same gods. 
and they're all separate gods like yes to both it depends on where you're looking at it from the truth of it is god is a resting place for an ideal i don't it doesn't matter what name you call that ideal the ideal remains the same and the ideal is the benevolent all force that is supporting creating perpetuating and ultimately destroying all life like that the the, the omnipotent omnipresent divine invisible essence that's governing the movement of the heavens that's what god is it doesn't matter what name you call it at that point uh, my suggestion would find one that actually rings true in your heart once you get that well, you don't care what other people call god and what was your when you were a kid what was your religion you started off as yeah yeah as what um, as, uh, christian. Christian, christian 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 i was in a non-denominational christian church powerful powerful experience i loved it so much i got so much nourishment and like that was the first place that i really felt the presence of god non-denomination in case people don't understand means that it's not really any denomination correct it's uh, it's, it's overall all denomination in one right truth it, it, it recognizes the validity of every right. denomination's viewpoint right um it's also now classified as a charismatic church um the slang form was like uh jesus hippies um which makes sense like the the motto there was come as you are and you will be loved and yeah. rang true it was a warm and beautiful place to uh, raise but i found for myself that there wasn't enough substance there to satisfy my intellect and my curiosity to know god not only based on faith and feeling, but also based on fact and understanding. Like, I, I, you, you miss me the moment that you're like, oh, I'm sorry, your question's too complicated. Just have faith. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm sorry. I'm done with this. I'm, I'm done with this. I'll go figure it out on my own. Thank you. <laughs> so, so in a sense, it's like religion, um, religion is like a stepping stone. Um, when appropriately applied in a life, in a life, my experience says yes. I want to stress that. When appropriately applied in a spiritual life, right. my personal experience says yes. That's Religion true. is meant to give us a framework of relationship with the divine. But in truth, it even says it in the Bible. All you must work out your own spiritual redemption with fear and trembling. It, it, it's right there. Like at, at the end, you follow the path until it's, it ends and then you keep walking. If you ever truly want God in your life, it's going to be in the quiet moments of your own heart. You won't find it in a book. You won't find it anywhere else. Um, my experience, if that means anything to you. So everybody should strive to achieve their own experience, their own connection. I don't know about should. Um, I would recommend it. You would recommend it. <laughs> right. Um, I, I will say this. It's available. There's a connection available inside of you. And it's not religious in nature. God does not, in my experience, care whatsoever how you approach her. As long as you approach her in a spirit of, I genuinely want to get to know you. That's all that's required. And then from there, the God within you. And I literally mean inside of your mind and your heart. I, I'm not talking about some metaphor. I'm talking about the highest visions of your life. And the, those moments where you're so down and there's this gentle whisper in your ear that says, you know, you're stronger than you think. And I see you and I love you and I see your heart. And we're going to get through this together. And I know it feels hard, but I made you strong and you can do this. That's the voice of God. Get to know that essence. Get to know that like, wow, there's a part of me that really loves me and wants what's best for me. Why don't we listen to that? That's so weird to me. It's so weird that we dismiss those as like, oh, this is just more information. <laughs> Because there's another part of me that just tears down everything I say. And that guy speaks louder, so he must yeah. be right. Yes. Still small voice. These are not metaphors. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a choice, though. It's a, it is 100% a, a choice. Of what you listen to. 100%. Direction. Do you want to 
listen to God or you want to listen to and what do you say the other one is your ego uh no it's usually like to put it accurately it's conditioned thinking patterns we are conditioned to believe ourselves as fundamentally bad wrong flawed and self-destructive so we are taught to verbally tear ourselves apart to drop like pain inside of our mind on ourselves in order to humble our natural inclination. It's written in our history books. It is all, it is our history book, in fact. All our history is basically. The issue is, what if that's lunacy? Wow. What if you could just trust yourself? What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you don't, like, you're not your worst enemy. In fact, by design, you're your greatest supporter. I mean, I give myself a high five for parking correctly. Get it? Get it? Yo, you hit that thing on the number, Scott. We're not. I'm going to be with me for 24-7 for the rest of this thing. Who do I want to be in bed with? You know what I'm saying? I, nah. I, I can love myself. I can like myself. I can encourage myself. So I'm going to do that. It was hard. It was hard. It took every day for 12 years to get to this point because I was conditioned to second guess myself, doubt myself, doubt my intentions, doubt like if I was actually pure of heart or if I was corrupted, like doubt whether I was actually even a good person or worth anything or if anything I had to say would be a value to, I was, I was bathed in that from a childhood and I'm not blaming it. That's just the water I swam in. And I, you know, while I was swimming, like every kid, sucked in some of the water. Still in my guts. <laughs> Not anymore, because I just did a really deep detox. I, I actually really did do that. It's just, you know, I'm done. Went on a ramble for a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, like again, Matthew... <laughs> Great topic. Um, love to hear. I love to hear from um, Matthew, and I totally agree. I totally agree inside with Matthew's um, situation. I, to me, God is existence, and you're here to develop a personal connection with God, and just to live out your life. And to live out your life is to to grow to the highest expectation of yourself, to achieve the the the, the highest fit physical. The highest energy, you know, it's, it, all